<laughs> Welcome back, people. Today's episode is gonna touch on to DIY or not DIY. This topic has become near and dear because I am setting things up in the new space. Things are coming along and I am asking myself that question, do I buy new stuff or am I gonna fix up some old stuff? And maybe here and there build something out of scratch. I'm a personal fan of DIY. I've DIY'd a lot of things in my shop. It gives it a personal touch. I can customize things to fit exactly how I want them or where I want them in the shop. Big fan. Of course, the problem I'm coming into is time. You know, do I have time to do that? It brings up a question, how much is your time worth? I find that's becoming the question. Say you find something on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, good deal. Example, this wonderful tool bench that I got on uh, Facebook Marketplace, $50. 50 US dollars, and I put a little love into it, put a little work into it. I ended up putting on this new top, and I cleaned up the drawers, and I wiped it down, and I put new inserts in it, and with the extra materials and my time, I spent a lot more than $50, maybe three times as much. I'm happy with what I got, probably saved some money in the long run, but it took a lot of time, and if I factor in what my time is worth, maybe I didn't make out. I mean, think about, I had to go buy it, of course, you know, and it's not like you go to the store, you know, down the street and then you buy something and bring it back. I had to go kind of far, an hour out of my way, meet somebody at a time that they preferred, buy it, do a little chit chat, bring it back. It was kind of a production, just getting this thing. And then separate from that, I brought it here. I probably spent a couple hours taking it apart. I went to the store and bought the wood and the inserts and a couple little pieces of hardware that were missing. Then I spent a couple hours putting it all together. So that's the question, what's your time worth? Am I working at $8 an hour? If that's the case, then, you know, maybe, but yeah, I don't know if I'm, I don't know. I don't think I've worked for $8 an hour in a long time, so I don't think that's the right number. If I was gonna do something else today, building a moped, building a moto, what would I be making in that case? I think that's the number you should focus on. Now, I guess it's possible that if you plan out one of these projects, things come up that you didn't expect, you have to sort of like pre calculate a certain amount of error, mistakes. So you gotta factor in like 20% more time. Maybe more, but that could be undercutting it. It could be more like 40%. You just think it's gonna be bing, bang, boom, and it's not. Here's another example, another example of where I thought I'd make out, but I did not. I bought these two shelves for $10 each. I actually bought another one. There's a third one in here somewhere. One of them was actually fine and it looks great. These two, not so good. It looked good on paper. You know, 10 bucks each, $30, boom, bang, bing, bang. But these need a paint job. So I'm out here power washing them. It just take an extra time. I, I didn't think this, I need to do this. I thought this was gonna be a one, two, three, but it's not. And I could have just bought brand new shelves. There's a lot of YouTube channels that talk about DIY and they praise it and they calculate what they spent and it seems more affordable. If you're gonna factor in the materials alone, you know, maybe I'm making out. But then no one's factoring in the time. They just don't. They don't factor in the time. It's like time is free. I mean, did it take you two hours to do this thing? Are we talking, you know, you spent the last three days constructing your, your desk. Time is a commodity, precious commodity. I put in a lot of spare time to get these shelves the way I want them, and they're still sort of crappy shelves. <sighs> they're gonna look nice, but they're not gonna hold tons of weight. Lessons learned. I should have learned this some other time. I do apologize for the lack of moped content on my moped channel, but this is, it's related. It's related, it's just building a moped factory content instead of working on mopeds. So again, bear with me on the fun projects. The fun projects that I need to do to get going, but I'll give you a tour, a more of a tour right now. Right now we're sort of standing in the middle warehouse portion. My shelving units are all over here. First up is the packaging station for all those online packages featuring a custom shape table, shelves for boxes and bubble wraps and paper and stuff. Fit for stools. 
the shelves that we're painting right now will go here. And this is gonna be for more, maybe hardware. I'm trying to order this hardware on the mass quantity side. Thousands of nuts, thousands of bolts. You get it cheaper when you buy it in bulk. So I gotta store it and I don't wanna lose track of it, obviously. More shelves, kinda wanna squeeze those together and get another one in there. Before I put on some existing Moto tools and parts that I've already made and barely have enough room for more, so. The rest of the place is, it's a mess, so there's not really much to show. Oh, except, except something that's, oh. It's like I didn't feel complete. I felt empty without replacing my forklift. An even better one, because this one is only 20 years old, not 40. Now I don't use my forklift like all the time, like every day, like some businesses might, but I use it often enough where I want something that starts when I turn it on, gives me as little, little issues as possible. And this is gonna do it, Toyota. I mean, Toyota makes the best forklifts, I think. I've done a lot of research, a lot of brands out there. We're gonna get some big deliveries, maybe two months from now. I'm glad that I have it back, Toyota. Then of course we have the tool room, which is still being worked on, but I have uh, this new workbench that we got for cheap. Can't remember if I told you that story, but we ended up buying this. Top was all crappy, so I replaced it. Combination plywood bottom and a wood top. I like it a lot. In the shop, I'm always craving surface areas. I need more spaces to put stuff, so I got this all set. And then, uh, you know, we have our old table here, another old table there office headquarters where I could sort of plan it all out and have a little quiet time. Still in its infancy. This is also sort of like the family friendly area where it's safe to have kids so the daughters when they visit me don't like, you know, chew on something they shouldn't supposed to. Like I got art easel. That's the gist of it. That's the basic idea. A new home. We didn't do much mopeds today, but we're doing a lot for mopeds today. This is all for mopeds. When I'm done here, we'll have the finest moped factory I've ever seen. So a couple of days have passed since I started my DIYing. I haven't had a change of heart, but my perspective has changed. Still all about what's your time worth, and I think that should be totally considered when doing a project. But what I realized is I might have started with materials that were just a little too far gone. I opted not to use brand new materials, but I took something old, tried to make it new. That was difficult and maybe put me in a poor mood, a little negative Nancy. I'm continuing the process and I came across something for free. So now my material cost is zero, making me feel not so bad putting in my time. I found this beautiful piece of wood. It looks like it could have come off of a desk, right? It's actually not. Somebody treated this, it's like high quality plywood and it was coated for free. So fantastic. Along with this came this frame, two legs. So that's, I think that's why it was free. My plan, I'm gonna take this beautiful piece beautiful piece of wood and the frame, use these legs and add a set of drawers on the side. And I think it's gonna be great because I got good materials. I guess that's the secret. While I was there, a very nice lady gave me this incomplete desk. She said that her former husband loved bikes, bicycles, and he had this very intricate rack. So I bought this for a pretty good price because I just couldn't take my eyes off of it. All aluminum, relatively light considering like how big this thing is. There's no branding on it. And I did some internet research to see like what, what this is. Can't find any. It's a bicycle rack. They go in the back of your truck or car. It hooks up to the hitch here and then it expands. Ugh. Your bicycle, or I'm thinking this little moped fits in here and they sort of like put the wheels in here, kind of tighten it down. Little anodized handles here. All aluminum construction. I've never seen it before. So, so I'm asking, I'm just throwing this out there. If you know what the hell this thing is, drop it in the comments. Never seen it before. I challenge you to go find it. Is it homemade? There's no markings, there's no name brand or model number on it. If it's homemade, it's quality, quality. I challenge you.
But the shelves didn't come out so bad. That's one of them. I'm using it to hold my Kennedy toolboxes and all the fancy stuff. So that's that's the first one. And then the second one, it's already bolted in place next to its brother, and I got stuff on top of it. Both in place. Both took a long time. But never but never mind that. The only piece of equipment I've purchased for this desk is the cabinet, which is a Harbor Freight welding cabinet. Put your welder on and have all your accessories in there, but we're not using it for that. We're gonna use it as a desk cabinet. I think it'd be nice, super heavy drawers. It's the right height, about 28 inches without the wheels. So I'm not gonna use the wheels. I'm not gonna use the handle. I'm not gonna use the little thing where you hold cable. I'm kind of just have just the cabinet, somehow attach it to the the table. And that's the DIY project for today. I'm gonna give it another chance and see if I can not be so negative. First thing we're gonna do is clean this area up. It's a mess and I can't, can't work in these conditions. The idea is to get everything set up over here in this corner. I wanna have the CAD computer on this desk. The desk is gonna go here, and then the new desk will sort of come up this way. Initially, I'm not crazy about these wire outlets. A bit of an eyesore. I'm not really sure what that for. It looks like it's for like a washer dryer. I don't know what was it used to be in here, but those are like 220 outlets. It doesn't make any sense. Kinda of wanna take them down. I'm gonna do it eventually. I think the first thing to do is set up the cart so that I have the height that makes just make sense for the whole thing. Cause I can adjust. So the legs that are here, I can adjust them. I could shorten them. I have these little adjusters on the end. There's a little flexibility here, but the cart has no flexibility. It's gonna be whatever height it's gonna be. First thing I notice is that it's way more disassembled than I, uh, I thought and that's so good because I don't want to use like ant stuff. I just want to use the cabinet and the drawers. So it's going to be easy. 28 inches tall. Just what we want. Not even. But you get the picture, right? First thing I'm gonna do is take off the legs, cut them to 28 inches. It's time for me to expand my toolbox. I'm a metric guy. All mopeds are metric. I don't have the Imperial system in my tool collection. Very few. A box of randomly assorted things I have to dig through because I use them so infrequently. This is becoming an issue. Rebuilding the shop again. I'm coming across the Imperial system all over the place, so I'm gonna have to expand my toolbox. But for now, we're using vice grips. Now that the legs are off, we could cut them on the bandsaw. These little plastic, uh, little adjusters pop right off. Cut them to 28 inches. Well, actually I should cut them a little shorter. So I'm adding this 27 and 3 fourths. Pretty clean cut, but just by that naked eye, I think my bandsaw is off. With bandsaws, you have to sort of like tune them up, make sure the blade's cutting straight. And I have not done this in a while. I don't know, what do you think? Might look like a little off. It looks like I have to true up my bandsaw. Another project for another time. See here, those are roughly the correct height now. I cut a piece of wood, a little particle board wood, dropped it into this cabinet because it has a, you know, a dip where you would put your welder because this is 
It's supposed to be a welder cart. So now we have a nice flat surface for this to rest on. I'm gonna screw the support to the piece of wood. It's gonna drop into this cabinet real nice. And I'm gonna screw the support to the tabletop. It's all attached, except the only difference, the creative difference, is that there's actually not anything physically attaching that piece of wood I made to the cabinet. It just sits in the groove in this little um, nook. So it's in there, it's actually really thick. It's like pressed fit really tight, this wood is in there. I could totally remove this, take this thing apart by just kind of like picking up the table and pulling the cabinet away. I don't think it'll just come apart on accident. At least I hope not, but it'll come apart easy if I needed it to come apart. I'm gonna take this off, it's, it's all aligned right. I'm gonna put it on the big piece of wood, attach it, and it should just drop right in. I'm adding these little sight holes so I can properly screw the table to the base. Let me, let me show you. At first, I wasn't sure if I was gonna do this, um, but there's these two spots where you can't see the board, and I still wanna attach the support to the table, so I'm making some holes with the hole saw so that I could have access to them. Ah! Yeah, there you go, see? Access. Now I just gotta find the right hardware, and this thing's gonna be done. Don't wanna screw this up. The length of the hardware is kind of important. If I go too long, I ruin my nice surface. The whole point is the nice surface. Well, it's all in there now. All I gotta do is put it in place. Have good aim. got the, uh, the little drawers going on. That's it. We'll have like, like a computer over here, maybe the CAD. I'll have my laptop on this, and I think this is enough room. Next day, and the DIY progresses. I wasn't even thinking about painting anything, but it's sort of like, well, I went this far. I might as well like make the office exactly how I want it. So I shrug my shoulders, and here I am painting an accent wall here on the back. Maybe it'll make the whole presentation, the whole video presentation, just a little bit better. It's a little more high quality, maybe. I've taped everything up. Like any proper paint job, you gotta you gotta cover up the details. Take those outlet panels off, take them off. That's the way to get the clean lines. Don't be lazy. Probably spend an extra 45 minutes taping this down real, real nice. It just looks that much better. It's worth it, it's worth it. Time lapse of me painting. Huh? What do you think? Now, some of you may ask, why didn't I paint the wall all the way to the top? I left this little like spot up there. I'm not sure if this is actually gonna work out, but I wanted to leave a spot where light can reflect back as like a reflector. It's like a video thing. I'm not sure if it's actually gonna work because it's not like a lot of wall, but every little bit helps. Also, it just made it a little easier because the pole was only uh, six feet long. But basically, this is the new look. Not to forget about why we're here, but my grandmother has this saying, my grandmother, my grandmother. You gotta do what you gotta do to do what you wanna do. So we're doing what we gotta do to do what we want to do. So some cool things coming up soon. We got a little play date with Moped Emporium. He's gonna bring his electric bikes over, check them out. Also, the Tampa rally is coming up. I'm in the Tampa area now. Hopefully I can meet some local moped enthusiasts. Very few things like that, so moped rally coming up soon. And then we'll get to building bikes. I think you're saying soon. Everything is soon. We'll get to the bikes. We'll get to them. All right, well this is Pete from Second Stroke Mopeds saying, don't forget about mopeds, and we'll see you uh, soon next week, possibly. I'm trying to bang these videos out. Let's hope so.